Hi, it's Greg Harrell here, and I want to talk about editing Tampa Monkey scripts in Vim. Uh, so first of all, just as background, in case you don't know what Tampa Monkey is, uh, it's an extension for your browser, uh, which enables you to run arbitrary JavaScript on pages. So I'll show you some of the scripts that I have installed. Um, as an example, we have this one, um, which as you can see here, makes the text area on GitHub's pages bigger. So when we look at that, you'll see it's just a little bit of JavaScript uh, that when you're on github.com, it's going to insert a style tag with some overrides for the GitHub website. Um, and just to show you what that looks like, um, this is going to target a text area and that would normally be 100 pixels high, but we're going to make it 300 pixels high at a minimum. So uh, when I'm on GitHub, uh, this is what it looks like. Normally that would be about a third of the size, but with this user script running, uh, you can see it's a little bit bigger. Um, and you can see that it's the user script doing that because uh, when I look in the menu, you can see here that that user script is active on this page. So uh, the extension itself comes with this neat little editor, uh, but I would like to be able to edit these things in Vim. So I'm going to show you the hack that I used to do that. Mm, basically, uh, as you can see here, um, there are a couple of metadata fields that you can include in user scripts that uh, Tampa Monkey will use to keep them up to date. Um, and in my case, I am actually serving them off of Apache running on this local machine. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because Apache comes with macOS. So I don't have to install anything additional to do it. And uh, this is more secure than, for example, putting here a file URL. Um, a file URL would require me to grant elevated privileges to the extension so that it could read the file system. I mean, I would rather not do that if I can avoid it. I could also just point this at um, a GitHub repo and just get the raw URL. But once again, I prefer not to do that. Um, for security reasons, because uh, if my if a repo were ever to be compromised on GitHub, someone could push arbitrary ArbScript there, uh, ArbScript, <laughs> JavaScript there, and uh, run whatever they wanted as me in my web pages. Um, I'd rather have it be a file on my machine. Um, so how do we set this up? It's uh, pretty straightforward, I guess. I'll show you uh, where this is set up. Um, we have etc. HTTP conf. There's a couple things that you need to do. This is on High Sierra. I don't know what it's like on later versions of macOS, but uh, basically you have to uncomment the user do load module directive, and you also have to uncomment this line here, which includes this additional config. Um, and I'm going to actually also open that file. Uh, because I think I had to edit that one too from memory. I had to uncomment this line here that includes the user files. And finally, I had to create a user file that includes this directive here that tells Apache to serve files out of my home directory. Um, and so if I go back to my browser now, um, you can see Apache is running on my machine. Um, and that's my username. So if I go there, you'll see I've got a user scripts directory um, and here are the user scripts. Um, and if I click on one of them, because their names are, because they end in .user.js, the Chrome extension will actually just load it automatically and offer to overwrite whatever I've got in there um, with this reinstall button. Now, the process for updating is quite straightforward. Um, all I have to do is edit the contents in Vim and bump the version number and Tampa Monkey will do the right thing. So if we go here to settings, you'll see the script update um, every day. It's going to check to see if there's an update to the script. But if I ever want to do an immediate update, I can do that as well. Just going up here and going check for user script updates and checks and it doesn't find any because I haven't made any changes. Uh, but if I had made a change, um, in other words, if I'd made any edits here and bump the version number, then it would pull a new version in. Uh, but I guess the final piece to show you is how this is all set up. Um, basically, I have a uh, Tampa Monkey config here, um, which is going to do a few things. Uh, one is it's going to make sure I have a, 
a sites directory and inside that a user scripts directory. And then for all of the uh, subdirectories in my user scripts source, uh, which I'll show you now, uh, it's here. So I've got these, I've got two GitHub scripts and one Twitter script. Um, for each of those, it's going to create a directory. And um, then it's going to fill the templates in. I'll show you one of the templates. So for example, Tampa Monkey, that one there, um, you'll see it's basically just JavaScript, uh, but I'm inserting my username here into the URL because uh, I have two machines and my username is different on the two machines, but I want the URL to work in both places. Um, and that's really it. Um, the other thing that gets interpolated into this template is this magical string here. Um, so if I open the sites directory and open one of these files, user scripts, you will see that that got expanded to this. Um, and I can't edit the file because this is a Vim mode line. Um, because basically I don't want to make the mistake of opening one of these files and trying to change it and then finding that the next time I run my dot file setup, it overwrites this file. So that's what this set no modifier no modifiable does here. Um, of course, if I really do want to edit it, in any case, modifiable, I can still do it. I just have to set modifiable first. Okay, so let's go back to where we were before. Um, we fill the templates and then we configure Apache. So basically, um, you can see um, that I template out that file uh, that I showed you earlier. Uh, this one. Oh no, it's called uh, user conf. There we go. So basically, this also is a template that uh, basically just plugs in whatever my home directory is on the machine that I run this. And finally, we uncomment some lines. So you'll see here, this basically says, you know, find the line that matches this regex. It could be a commented out include directive and make sure it looks like this. So that it has the effect of uncommenting it. Um, same for this directive here. Um, and finally, this one here. Uh, if the directives weren't present in the file, commented out, it would just add them at the bottom. And then the last thing we do is uh, make sure that Apache is running here by using the launch control command and uh, we tell it to restart just in case we change anything since the last time we ran it. Um, so I'll show you what this looks like when I run it. Uh, not, not super exciting. It's not going to do anything because the files are already set up. That's why it says OK here. Um, so these directories already existed. These files already existed. Um, and these files already have the contents that we want from our template. It's asking me for my password because uh, it wants to run sudo commands to interact with launch control and Apache control. Um, I do have to refactor this a little bit. Well, not so much refactor it as equip it with the ability to only do these commands if I actually change something above here, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, and so that's all. That's my incredibly complicated way of uh, configuring Tampa Monkey uh, because I didn't want to run around pasting and copying text into this editor. Um, so I hope that was useful and I'll see you next time. <laughs>